What's up guys and welcome to the service. Guys, it's amazing having you here. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Wherever you're watching from, just let us know. Drop us a comment, tell us where you're watching from. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, interact with you in this time that we're here. So I want to welcome Pastor McKay. Welcome to the service. It's great having you here. Um, so we're going to delve into overwhelmed, but God. And so before we get there though, I just want to do some logistics. Go and check us out on Facebook. Go and check us out on YouTube and on Instagram. We've got so much content that will bless you. So go and subscribe, go and follow, go and do all of the necessary things and go and share some of the stuff. If you're watching it and it moves your heart, share it with someone that you know. And then lastly, I want to say thank you for your generosity in this time. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you that you're generous with what God has given you. And I want to pray for that. And then I want to pray for the word as well. So God, we thank you that you say that you love a cheerful giver. Lord, I pray that every seed that is sown will fall on fertile ground. Lord, may we know that you are our reward. Your word, your gospel is our reward. God, you are good and you're gracious. And Lord, I pray that the word that is, that is preached today will go into hearts and minds. Lord, I pray that we open up ourselves to what you want to say. Holy Spirit, come and speak to us right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Great. Amen. So uh, today we're speaking a bit about the great cloud of witnesses that cheers us on when we feel like we can't really go on anymore. Amen. Um, so in Hebrews 12, chapter 1, we read about this great cloud of witnesses. And um, it says that, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, mm. let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. Yeah. Now, perseverance only comes in when I feel like I can't go anymore. Otherwise, I'm not very persevering. I'm enjoying it. That's good. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you know but I used to be a 400 meter runner <laughs> Come on. Um, it doesn't look like it because I had two children in one year and two surgeries in one year wow. so wow. it's good memories but <laughs> <laughs> but one race that I'd like to tell you about which I think is really relevant yeah. is um I I normally like only got competition around nationals so I know it sounds like I'm bragging, but <laughs> you'll understand the point talents. now <laughs> go go talents. go so um I was surprised by this one race where I always got picked the third lane. So I got people pushing me from the back and then yeah. people pulling me from the front. So uh -huh. normally by the 200 meters, I would have overtaken everyone on my right hand side. Yeah. And I get to the 200 meters war mark. And this is this one girl at the friendly and I'm just not getting past her. And we get to the 120 meters mark. Now, I don't know if you heard about hitting the wall. But that just feels like when you can't go in yeah. on any longer. Yeah. So um, we used to have a joke. And this is not the strategy to running a 400. <laughs> but we said with the first 100 meter, you run as fast as you can. Yeah. And the second 100, you run even faster. And the third 100, you do it even harder. And wow. the last 100, you pray, God, <laughs> God, if you pick them up, I'll put them down. <laughs> like, I just want to survive this. Wow. So I'm, I'm getting there. And I think both of us are tired, but this girl is right next to me. And I remember that there's, it, it feels like you're running in slow motion. It's not, you're not really thinking about the race as much yeah. in terms of how you feel. You're thinking about all the strategy behind it. Mm. And I remember I heard my friends cheering at that point. And wow. the second that I heard my friends, I made that decision that I was going to win and I'm going to continue this race. And at wow. the moment that I felt like I couldn't go any longer, but I made the decision to push through, yeah. she made the decision to not push through because she was wow. tired and she fell back. Wow. And the reason why I'm telling this is because in our race, in terms of spiritual life, mm -hmm. it's really necessary that we make the decision, the act of decision. There's a power in our decision making. It's very much a mental thing. Yeah. And I want to make active decision that I will not accept anything contrary to what God has already promised me. Come on. And for me to be able to make those decisions, I need to know what God's will is. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if you've, you've probably heard also, you know, God's will is mysterious. We can't know, but that's wow. not what scripture tells us. Yes. So one of my favorite verses is in Ephesians 5, 17, where we read, do not be foolish, but know what the will of the Lord is. Yeah, Romans good. 12, 2, we normally quote the first part, but we forget the second part, which yeah. is do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can know and taste what God's perfect, yeah. pleasing. That's good. I, I must say, I actually hate that. Um, or let me not say hate, but I, 
I really dislike it when people say God works in mysterious ways. Because I feel like if you know the Bible, then you'll know how he works. And you'll get to understand how he works and you'll get to know his will, like you just said. So it's really good. Absolutely. And scripture also tells us that Jesus is the, the mystery has been revealed yeah. in Jesus Christ. Exactly. So the, exactly. it, there's no mystery left. If I look at Jesus, he's the image yes. of what God's will is That's for us. Right. So I want to be sure about what his will is so that I can make that decision. In James chapter one, mm. we read that we don't want to waver when we go to God because then we're like a wave tossed in the wind. Yeah. I, yeah. Because if you're doubting, then you won't receive anything yeah. from God. I need to be certain. Yeah. And I think our friends contribute so much to this because if I'm uncertain about whether or not I'm going to go to a certain party, which is not good for me, then many times my, my friends influence whether I'm going to go. Yeah. Or whether I'm not going to go, whether I'm going to stick to my values. Yes. So um, if I think about people that cheer me on, it's one thing to have my friends cheer me on. But um, I used to be a big fan of Usain Bolt. He was oh, yeah. my hero. Well, you being so, in that, <laughs> <makes sense. laughs> But what he said, well, I, I imagine what it would feel like for me when he was cheering for me. Because yeah. he knows the hard work that goes into it. He knows mm -hmm. the exercise that went through, that yeah. I had to go through to be able to get to that race. And if he's cheering me on, I feel like... I would have been so much more motivated. And yeah. I think that's what it's like with well, that's what it's like with these faith heroes in Hebrews chapter 12. That's They've cool. already been through this journey that yeah. we are currently struggling with. And mm. if I understand that it's not just anyone that's cheering me on, yeah. it's people who's journeyed through this that's cheering me on. Yes. That's really encouraging to me. Yes. So I think there's things that we can learn from them. Mm. So um if we look at chapter 12, it starts with the word therefore. So therefore, we want to know what happened <laughs> therefore. Yeah. So um, there's many things that I can learn from these people because I used to watch videos from Usain Bolt so that I can exercise like him, that I can do things like him. That's good. So that's in the same way I can learn from the faith here so that they can encourage me. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that it's, it, it doesn't start with this, but we continue to read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, yeah. without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we come to faith knowing that he is real and yes. that is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So what is my job? My job is to diligently seek God. Passion mm. translation says is to passionately seek him. Um, our actions say a lot about what I believe. Yeah. So my actions say it reveals what I truly believe and mm. what I think I believe. That's good. That is in my That's actions, good. not in my emotions. Yeah. If I think about actions, one of the faith heroes that are listed there is Sarah. Uh -huh. So um, if you can remember, Sarah stood in the door of the tent when God made the promise to Abraham about all these children. And yeah. scripture tells us that she was barren and beyond the age of childbearing. So yes. she laughed yeah. when that happened. Yeah. So if I look at it, I'd say she did not have faith. Yeah. But she's listed among the the people in the hall of fame for wow. faith wow. because she had an action that yeah. caused her to conceive That's in cool. faith. She had an action that caused her to conceive and to inherit God's promises. And many times I don't feel like I can do it or I feel overwhelmed or I feel like, Oh, but if I can at least get past that emotion to act upon that promise that God gave me, yes. then I'm able to step into it. Yes. Um, another person that we read about, well, with Sarah, just something that I want to touch on is it says in, in that verse 11, her, the authority of her faith rested in the one who made the promise and she tapped into his faithfulness. So wow. faith is not an abstract thing. It is a trust in a personal God. Yeah. And if I know God, it's so much more easy for me to trust him, not because the promise sounds ridiculous, but because yes. I know the character of the one who said it. Mm -hmm. And um, when we go on to read about Noah, it says that faith opened up his heart to receive God's revelation about the things that were about to come. Yeah. yeah. So um, the things that were not, not even seen before. So he stepped out in obedience to build that ark to be able to save his family. Yeah. So now he was obedient to what God told him to do. And I, a couple of years ago, I stumbled across this verse in, in Psalm 16 verse eight, and it's, it changed the way that I read scripture, but it says, I will set the Lord continually before me. And because he's at my right hand, I will not be moved. And I don't know about you, but I tend to think about I don't want to be moved. I want to be stable. I want yeah. to be secure in where yeah. I'm at. We, we strive That's so hard good. for that, but it was never my responsibility. Yeah, so we yeah, wear yeah. ourselves out trying to take things upon ourselves that are, that's not our responsibility, that's God's responsibility. Yes. What is my responsibility? It's to set the Lord continually before me. And um, if I can just be obedient to the word that the Lord has given me, it's so much more easy for me to press on through. In John chapter 16, verse 13, it says that he shows us things to come. This, the Holy Spirit shows us things to come the same way as with Noah. Yeah. The Lord showed him things to come. And I remember there's a specific story. I was in a tough living situation um, in my first year of ministry. And I felt like I was really being um, 
bullied in a sense uh -huh. and um, mistreated. Yeah. And I remember that I didn't know what to do with the situation because it was really emotionally very overwhelming for me. And, uh, you know, I want to be a Christian and a good person, but like, how do how do I act in this situation? <laughs> and I remembered about a dream that the Lord gave me about six months prior to that. And I went yeah. to speak to Tanya Bia about it. So with my dreams, I write all of them down when, when I feel like it's significant. Yeah. And I remember a lot of things and it's vivid. So that's a tip if you feel like you want to learn a bit on dreams, start by writing them down. And um, I remember sitting down. Okay, let me tell you the dream. So I was dreaming about a mosquito, but this enormous mosquito that's sitting on my ear. And I'm trying to pull it off and it's quite painful, but it just kept coming back on. And the only way that I could, no matter how I turned, no matter how I did, I couldn't get rid of this thing. Mm. The only way that I could get rid of it is for me to actually leave the area yeah. where the mosquito was. Yeah. And it sounds so stupid, but... Um, when I sat down and I prayed about the situation. I said, Jesus, I just don't know what to do. Yeah. And suddenly I remembered this dream that I completely forgot about. And I was able to go to my journals, read the dream. And I just realized that mosquito, something that I wrote is that it can be a nagging person. And it's mm. painful, this constant nagging and this constant. And that no matter what I do, and it was, it just doesn't go away. So that yeah. was very much a situation where I was in. Wow. And um with that, the only way for me to get rid of it is to actually physically leave the area. Yeah. And that's not something that I considered because it had financial implications for me. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is earlier that week, one of my husband's friends invited me and said, you're not maybe looking for a place to stay because we need a housemate. And I was like, no, I don't need a place to stay. I'm happy where I'm at. And yeah. that's the week that many of the situation just escalated or wow. much of it. And it was amazing just how God showed me things to come. So it's great for us to be able to journey with God so that when the situation arises and I'm emotionally involved, I can get an objective perspective of what God has already yeah. showed me. Yeah. And uh, I, just, I just love it. And it doesn't mean that God... Does we, I can't run to God whenever a problem arises. Yeah. I mean, he's always there. I can yeah. always go to him. But journeying with him yeah. um, so that I'm ready for that is yeah. just, it helps so much. Amen. Another character that we're looking at is Abraham. So um, in verse 8, we read that faith moved Abraham to obey God's call and to leave the familiar, to discover the territory that he was destined to inherit from the Lord. Wow. He left with only a promise not knowing what was lying ahead yeah. of him, not knowing yeah. where he was going. And um, he stepped out in faith. Yeah. And I think this is very relevant to just the season where where we are at as young people, like where am I going to go and mm. concerning my purpose and what God has called me to do. So maybe you're feeling overwhelmed in terms of not knowing what your purpose is, not knowing what it is that God is calling you for or taking you towards, um, that uncertainty of not having a specific calling. Or maybe you know what it is that God is calling you for, but you feel completely overwhelmed by it. Mm. You don't know how it's going to happen. You don't know where to start. And um, like we can have one of two revelations. Either I, I know I'm called to be an accountant in yeah. this area at this time. And it's a very specific calling. And I think that helps in a sense, but yeah. I think most people are at a place where it's more of a general calling. Like I know that I'm called to serve people, but there's so many choices and options yeah. for me. So yeah. like, where do I start even? Yeah. And especially when you're studying, depending on what you're studying, most things that you study, you've got a wide array of things that you can do with your studies. But I want to, I want to touch on what you said with, with um, faith in this time, you know, when, I think this is where the tire meets the track. You know, we, we love talking about faith and we love saying that you need to have faith in these areas, in these areas. But in these times, this is where it becomes, am I going to lean on what the word says about having faith? Not just, not just keeping it as a hypothetical thing, but actually implementing it into my life. You know, like you said, there was something that followed on the fact that they had faith and that was the, what they did with it, how they moved in faith. And what you just read, that Abraham had to leave what he knew on a promise that God had. And so when God promises and you know those promises, you act on that faith. Exactly. It's, and it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's exactly. I need to act regardless of what I feel yeah. emotionally. Um just start moving in the right direction. Mm. Even if you're not certain exactly where it is that you're going, at least start to position yourself. Yeah. Even if I'm spending time with God, I'm not going to sit down and try and get a revelation and try and hear. At least start with getting positioned. At yeah. least start with setting out time with the Lord because at some point you're going to hear him speak. Because yeah, I good. feel like if I'm working to get a revelation, I feel overwhelmed because what if I don't hear it correctly? And then I just avoid sitting down with God at all. Mm -hmm. And um, we can't afford that because yeah, we're missing out on so much Amen. that the Lord has for us. Yeah. Um, so as an illustration, I just want to share a bit about my calling. Yeah. And hopefully you'll get something from this in terms of the different ways that we can feel overwhelmed with what God has called us to do, not only in this time, but with our lives. Because what's happening in this time 
it's a short period of time, but life all in all has not stopped. Life yeah. continues. Mm-hmm. Our callings continue regardless of what happens around us in the physical realm. Yes. So um, my, 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 <laughs> I, I'm one of the lucky people that know specifically that I'm called to go to Asia. Wow. I know that I'm called to go to the most atheistic nation in the world there. And I have many words about it because persecution is not fun. So I need them. <laughs> But um, I went on a mission trip there and I remember I was excited thinking, wow, I'll feel elated when I get there. I'll have peace. I'll just feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. And I got there (laughs) and I had the worst culture shock of my life. I know we we joke about culture shock, but I legit, I had it. I probably spent half the mission trip crying because (laughs) firstly, I disliked the culture. It was, it was disgusting to be there. Everything you got, you get off the plane and it stinks. Everything smells like (laughs) urine and the toilets. It's like the public bathrooms don't have doors. It's wow. not a toilet. It's a hole in the ground. And as far as you walk, what? they spit everywhere because they don't blow their noses. You can't blow their nose. It's rude to blow your nose. So they spit everywhere. Right. So on our buses, there stands no littering. On their buses, yes. it's noted no spitting. Oh, so wow. you must Many imagine how much spit wow. there is lying around. Sure. So firstly, my calling was not, it was not what I expected. So yeah. maybe you step into something, you step into your studies, you step into a certain relationship and it was not what you expected it to be it was Mm. not um what god has promised it was not it's just overwhelming because it's it's different from what you expected so you might feel disappointed in the midst of that and then moving on from that i was feeling guilty because i started asking my god why why here (laughs) out of all the places that i can go and i felt convicted because i knew why yeah i knew you like you, you know you have to you know, study because it's good for you to go where you need to go or you need to work or you need to intern, whatever it is. You know, you need to do it yeah. to move in the right the direction where it is that you want to go. Because I knew that I was walking down the street and everyone around me needs Jesus. There's like not one person that knows Jesus. And yeah. I felt so overwhelmed by that because they have all the depression that we have, all the mm. family struggles that we have. Mm. In, in one province, they had, in a whole province, they maybe have one counselor. They wow. don't have psychologists the way that we do. So how wow. do they deal with the emotional issues that they have? Yeah. And, um, so just concerning that, it felt like a huge task. Mm. And um, I just felt overwhelmed by that as well. So maybe even where you're at, you feel like there's so many expectations on you in terms of having to perform a certain way that either other people put on you or that you put on yourself. And you just feel overwhelmed by this task and overwhelmed by the academic pressure and overwhelmed by what's happening in your family in terms yeah. of losing people. Because it feels to us like, well, for me, it feels like we're losing people left, right and center. Yeah, and that true. can be very overwhelming because now it's not necessarily the way, it's not the way that I pictured this year. Yeah. Certainly not. <laughs> And then the last thing that I encountered was the fear of walking past policemen because <laughs> on every corner there's a policeman because of the dense population. Wow. So I remember walking past the, the policeman and thinking, this guy is looking for someone like me. Yeah. And we're sitting on buses and then people would come in with weapons this size and they take our passports from us, ask, well, what are you doing here? And then they make calls to check whether we're allowed to be in this country wow. and what we are doing here. Wow. Or is it legal? So you are just praying not to get arrested. And, and all of that's because you're sharing the gospel and exactly. you're not allowed to, right? Exactly, exactly that. And um, so you're carrying your passport everywhere you are. I delete Bible app from my phone so they don't find yeah, anything like, good. you don't want to trace, you have to have verses memorized. <laughs> 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 but many times we, and even when I came back, like a month after that every time I walked or I even saw a policeman down the streets or someone from the army because we we lived in Porch of Sturm where the yeah. army people are walking around it's like my heart stopped and I had to remember it's okay I'm not going to get arrested <laughs> because I'm a missionary <laughs> it's okay but many times we step into our calling and it it's fear it's scary and we yeah. have the fear of man and we have a fear of what our reputation would look like yes. and it's scary if if I do what God has called me to do, if sticking mm. to my values and it's not what other people expected from me and not yeah. what other people want from me. I'm scared of losing my friends because I'm now I changed yeah. in serving and following Jesus wholeheartedly. So what we do then is we just, because of the fear, we just decide not to go ahead. It's like if I'm running the race and I'm scared because of the feeling that I'm going to get when I hit that 100 meter mark and yeah. then I just withdraw. The same yes. with that girl. She she made that decision where she was scared of the pain that would come in mm. pressing through because I'm fully convinced that she would be able, she would have been able to beat me if she yeah. wanted to. Yeah. But that fear caused mm. her to fall back and that happens so, to us when yes. we get scared. We just we yeah. fall back and we don't even just yeah. engage in the calling that God has for us. Yeah. And here's the thing, regardless of what I feel, if I at least have a word from the Lord, I was there and I was overwhelmed, but I have a word from God that that is where I'm called to be. And that's the thing that could keep me going. And um, 
that's the same with Abraham. He had a, he had a word to go. And I'm sure that he encountered many challenges along yes. the way, but he was able to press on through because yes. of the word that he had from God. Yeah. So to live out our, our calling or even just to be in school and amongst friends or be in a work situation is tough at its best. Yes. But bringing kingdom in the midst of that yeah. is even harder. Yeah. So if I don't know what God has promised me in that, and if I don't know that I'm filled with this, the Holy Spirit to, to make an impact, it's going to be very difficult yeah. to press on. Yeah, and that's true. Uh, you know, one of one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got was get a word, you know, get a word from God. Whatever it is you're doing, you know, when you take on big things, small things, get a word from God because the word will never go anywhere. It never goes anywhere. It is imperishable. And so people's opinions are perishable. You know, people's things are perishable, but the word of God is imperishable. So when you've got a word from God, like you said, you go into places where you're not supposed to be there spreading the gospel, but because you have a word from God, that sticks, you know, that sticks. And it, and it applies not just if you go into a place where you're persecuted for your, for your faith. It's, it goes into wherever you're going, even if it's not as difficult as you've depicted what you went through, that doesn't matter. We need that word. We need that word of God to stick to. Mm. Yeah. And if I enter into a, a certain work situation, f- for those of you who worked, I, I used to do first aid when I was studying, and it's a it was a godless yeah. area. Yeah. So living out my values there and not doing the things that they were doing, that was very hard. Difficult. It yeah. was very hard. It's yeah. not it's not persecution, but emotionally it takes a really big toll for yeah. you to stand strong in the midst of that. So yeah. this is not just in terms of, this is not just if you're supposed to be a missionary, being doing things here and standing yeah. your, your ground here is very difficult yeah. because you're being mocked in your own nation. Um, and it's amazing for me to think that Abraham who went through this, these like, had challenges along the way. He's standing there cheering us on. Mm. He's standing there saying, Come hey, on. you can do this. Noah, who worked 100 years on the ark, is standing there saying, you can make this week. Yeah. You can survive this year. <laughs> you can survive these three years. <laughs> so just knowing what he went through and that he's there cheering me on, yeah, that's good. good motivation Come for on. me. And the thing is with emotion, um, in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11, we read that the heart is deceitful above all things. Not wow. that we're not allowed to feel God-created emotions, like physiologically, you can't make decisions if your emotional mm part of the brain is not intact so it's very normal but i cannot allow my emotions to dictate my destiny that's good i cannot allow that to happen that's good and um we read in this chapter 11 Mm. verse 14 that these heroes died clinging to their faith not even inheriting all the promises that god gave to them that is a good verse but they all lived their lives on earth as those who belonged to another realm Mm. so that brings me to laying down the carnal things the Mm. physical things that i'm dealing with i think many times i ask myself do i really understand the value of my salvation do i really understand the value of eternity because and it sounds really heavy, but it unlocks an unspeakable joy when mm. I can enter into that place with God where I'm in a relationship with him and I'm not just insisting on my Christian rights, yes. <laughs> where yes. I'm actually in intimacy with him because eternity is there. Yeah. It's not just about what happens now, what happens this week and whether I'll be surviving the next year, but there's so much more to life than yeah. just surviving. Just surviving life is really sad for for someone who knows the Lord. And um, it's not meant as a condemnation. It's meant as an encouragement for us to pursue him more and for him to come and unlock that revelation for us. I mean, like Abraham sacrificed or was on the way to obey to sacrifice Isaac. And uh, I have two children. I don't know. It's heart wrenching for me to even just think of sacrificing them. So, but we read that Abraham's faith made made it logical to him that God would rise Isaac from the dead. And symbolically, that is what happened. So, what I think about is Abraham knew God's character mm. in the midst of it, did, regardless yeah. of what it looked like on the outside, regardless mm. of the circumstances that he was in, he knew God's character. Yes. And it was logical to him that even though, even if Isaac had to die, God would be able to raise him from the dead. And that yeah. just blows my mind because yeah. he had a relationship with God. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. I mean, when, when, when you read the verse 14 and it says, um, they, they didn't even receive all the promises that they were given, you know, um, on earth, uh, you think about, What do we cling to the most? This is what I think about first and foremost. I cling to the gospel the most, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that he came and he died for us. These these guys didn't even see that, but they knew it was coming. They knew that their God would redeem them. And if there's nothing left, Mm -hmm. cling to that. Cling to that, that they they think about, or like you said, they're cheering us on knowing that we've already seen it. Mm -hmm. We're living after the cross. We've seen this. 
we've got so much to cling to, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if these guys did all of this without even seeing Christ die on the cross, how much more can we do? You know, exactly. How much more can we do? That's beautiful. That is a huge encouragement, yeah. a huge encouragement. And I, many times I think, I, th- I don't know if you've heard that, you know, something doesn't control you when you can give it away. Oh, yeah. And then I think, what can I lay down that is busy being on the throne of my heart? What can I lay down that is overwhelming me? If, yes. I, if my That's reputation good. is overwhelming to me, what people think about me, about the decisions that I make, yeah. I can lay that thing down because yes. if I can lay it down, I won't be overwhelmed by it because it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What matters is what God thinks about me. Yes. It's the gospel. Yes. And just getting back to the core of that really helps. Yeah. So we read in, in um, Hebrews 12, 12, chapter 1, that we need to get rid of the sin. And also, which I think is obvious, I'm not going to run a race in flip-flops. I want to yeah. run them in spikes. Yeah, We've yeah. got obvious things. But I also want to get rid of all the other hindrances that yes. makes it difficult for me to run. Yeah. So as an athlete, I didn't pick the most fashionable clothes. Yeah. I picked what was comfortable so yes. that I can run as fast <laughs> as I can. Yeah. So impressing other people and doing things, it's just, I want to get rid of everything that hinders me. And yeah. if that is like Netflix is not a sin, mm. not at all. And it's the time and a place to relax. But if that thing is hindering me yeah. from being in a relationship with God and stealing my time away from yeah. God, I need to lay that down. I need to get rid of that because yeah. it's hindering me in my run. Yeah. And I, I don't just, I don't want to have anything hindering me. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be hindered in the fullness of what God has for me yeah, that's good. I don't want to miss out yeah and um again just back to the friends my friends helped me to make those decisions the way that we spend our time together and first Corinthians 15 verse 33 we we read that bad company ruins good morals yeah, that's good. and um, I can spend time with people and reach out to them but the people that I'm allowing to speak into my life that makes a difference yes. because we also read in Proverbs 27 that iron sharpens iron and so one man encourages one another and I remember that feeling of my friends cheering me on and me feeling like I can't go on anymore I need to make it and them helping me to make the decision to keep going Mm -hmm. having Mm -hmm. people in my life to help me with that is huge like one of my friends just got admitted this last week with COVID pneumonia and um, it was overwhelming to me because I was scared for his life but something that helped is that we could join an online prayer group we actually prayed and it wasn't saying on WhatsApp yes I'll pray for you and then I forget about it it means that I pitch up at the prayer and I pray yeah, yeah. <laughs> and whenever he could and this is what really encouraged me is he pitched up at the prayers wow. while he's in hospital fighting for his life if he felt strong enough to join a prayer he joined in and he yeah. prayed and he received yeah. the prayers and he should be getting discharged very soon so we're That's very awesome. thankful for that but having also just seeing him allowing spiritual family to support him in this time yes. is amazing and yeah. I think one of the biggest revelations for me is to um not wait until next week or not to wait you know oh i'll tell them tomorrow if i love my husband i'm not going to tell him next week i'm going to tell him now if i want to eat healthily (laughs) i'm not going to wait until next week my next meal can be healthy so sign up for a connect group now get involved in a prayer group now do it now make the decision to run the race now to win now because it's not the the next race or next year because our lives will pass us by without us getting anywhere and then i don't i don't want to get to 90 years old and regret yeah i don't want to have regrets yeah god called you on a mission do it now (laughs) so what are we what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pray yes will you will you pray for us (laughs) yes (laughs) oh holy spirit thank you that um that you are with us. Thank you that you encourage us. Thank you, God, for the yes. cloud of witnesses that surround us, that mm. we can know that there are people that went ahead of us yeah. and maybe even encountered more than us or went through more than us. Jesus, you were tempted in every way, but without sin. You know what we are going through. You can emphasize with what we are going through. So we thank you that we are not alone. I thank you for spiritual family. Yes that can also encourage us in difficult times, but also in terms of the bigger calling, not just outside of COVID, outside of temporary issues. Yes. There's a bigger vision that you have for our lives. Yes. And I just I just pray for that, God, that you would encourage us in that, that we would encounter you in it, that you'd give us revelation on it, the way that you gave um, your, your faith here is revelation on, on your word and your truth. Yes. And I pray that you'll give every person listening a word for their lives, a direction to go into and the courage to continue with it and surround them with people that can encourage them in it. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Thank you so much, Margaret. That was such a great, great word. Um, and so there's one thing you can do right now. You can, you can firstly pray, and then secondly, share this video. Share this with someone you know. Share this with someone who needs this. If this video touched you, just share it, share it, share it. We need the world to know, and we need the gospel to be spread as far and as wide as we can. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.